You're here because you want to use a VPN with your smart TV set. Good idea. But there's one problem. Those inconsiderate TV manufacturers or using different firmware on their new sets. Some can support VPNs directly, some indirectly, and some not really at all. That's why in this video, we're going to break down almost every single method through which you can get a VPN running on your smart TV, how to do it, and the pros and cons of each. Plus a brief chat about why you'd actually want to use a VPN on your smart TV in the first place. Sound good? Great. For Top 10 VPN, I'm Callum, let's get started. First things first, an uncomfortable truth. Only TVs from certain manufacturers can have VPNs directly installed on them. If you don't have a TV from one of these brands, you'll have to use another method from this video. Nowadays, the market is flooded with tons of cheap, weird, and sometimes wonderful, oftentimes less so, brands that you've probably never heard of. A quick search for Android Smart TV on Amazon will reveal a few of them to you. Ignoring those, the big players that produce Android Smart TVs are Sony, Philips, Toshiba, TCL, Sharp, Hisense, and Panasonic. And that's just for us here in the UK as well. Your native country will likely have its own specific popular names that make them too. It should be pretty obvious if you have an Android Smart TV or not. There'll be Google or Android branding all over the menus and maybe even on the remote too. Take a look through your TV's home screen and see if you can find the Play Store. If that sounds familiar, it's because it's the exact same as the App Store on Android smartphones. It'll have the same logo and everything. If you found it, you have an Android TV. And that's great news, because now you have a huge choice of VPNs at your disposal to download straight onto your TV set. Broadly speaking, if it's available for Android smartphones, then it's available for your Android TV. Download the app, wait for it to install, then log in and connect. No more instruction needed, you're all done. But what if you aren't fortunate enough to own a TV set that runs Android TV? What if you're one of the many millions of people who own, say, a Samsung or LG TV, two massive brands that don't support Android? Well, here are some options for you. The first and likely most convenient for you is casting. Casting takes content from your smartphone and wirelessly transmits it to the TV. On iPhones it's called AirPlay and on Android devices it's just called Cast. It's a pretty clever workaround because really all you need to do is run your VPN on your phone like normal. Open up the app of whichever service you use and connect to a server. Then load up the content you want to watch just like you're settling in to watch it on your phone. Netflix, Max, BBC iPlayer, Hulu, whatever your preference. Now pick something to watch. If you're on Android, look for an icon somewhere on the screen that looks like a TV screen with a Wi-Fi signal inside it. If you're on iPhone, look for an icon that looks like a TV screen with a triangle at the base. Tap the icon, and then in the menu that appears, you should see the name of your TV. A pro tip, if you're doing this in a block of apartments or a row of houses, make absolutely sure that you're selecting your TV here. I once had a neighbor who kept trying to cast the TV in my lounge by mistake and it was, it was pretty annoying. Now, just sit back and relax and enjoy whatever it is you wanted to watch. Because the VPN is working its magic on your phone and getting you the content you want, you've cleverly sidestepped the need to have one on your TV at all, but the outcome is still the same. Okay, let's say you can't do that either. You don't have an Android TV and what you want to watch isn't on your smartphone. There's another workaround for using a VPN with your TV and it's pretty old school. For this method, you'll need a laptop and an HDMI cable. Fire up the VPN on your laptop, connect to a server and start streaming. Now, plug one end of the HDMI cable into your laptop's HDMI port and the other into one of your TV's HDMI inputs. And just like that, you're watching on the big screen with your VPN running like normal. It's not the prettiest solution, but it's very effective and super quick to get set up. Much less room for technical hiccups too. There is one last solution for using a smart TV with a VPN, but there's a very strong chance it won't be all that relevant to you. Using a VPN with your router. We already covered this in some detail in our video on how to set up a VPN on Xbox, but here's the deal. Very few routers are compatible with VPNs, so you'll likely have to buy a special and very expensive one if you want to try it. On top of that, there's only one single VPN out there with a fully fledged, feature rich and easy to use router app. ExpressVPN. I don't know why, I'm eagerly awaiting the day other VPNs follow in its footsteps. ExpressVPN is only supported by specific models of router or the one it makes itself, Aircove. If you already have a supported router, then you probably don't need my help here. Just install ExpressVPN, connect your smart TV to it, either via Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and you're done. Connect where you like, stream what you like. If all you're looking to do with a VPN on your smart TV is unblock different streaming services, and let's be honest, it probably is, then there is another solution that's VPN adjacent. It's called Smart DNS, and it's guaranteed to be compatible with every TV capable of connecting to the internet, so you don't need to worry about that. Here's how it works. When your TV contacts the server of an app or service to retrieve content, 
it contacts a server in your specific region. With Smart DNS, you're manually making those requests to servers in a different region instead, like, say, one with a movie you want to watch that isn't normally available where you are. It doesn't encrypt anything, and it doesn't change your IP address, that's how it differs from a VPN, but on a conceptual level, it's fairly similar. However, in order to do this, you need to know the address of a working DNS server in another region. The easiest and most reliable way to obtain this is via a Smart DNS service. Conveniently, there are several top-tier VPNs that offer it, uh, ExpressVPN, NordVPN, Surfshark, to name a few. If you're subscribed to one of them, then here's how to set up Smart DNS on your smart TV. First of all, sign up for a VPN that offers Smart DNS servers, or alternatively, sign up to a dedicated Smart DNS service like Windscribe's Control-D. In this example, we'll be using ExpressVPN, but the process should be fairly similar, whatever your provider. Now, go into the Accounts section of the website and look for the Smart DNS area. In the instance of ExpressVPN, for example, you need to go to the DNS settings menu first. What will usually happen now is you'll need to register your IP address. This is so the Smart DNS service can recognize you and your TV. Then it's time to generate your Smart DNS addresses. In the instance of ExpressVPN, just to add a little bit of confusion, the service is actually called Media Streamer. Look there. Your provider will present you with a list of DNS addresses that correspond to different regions and content libraries. Now that you have one that you want, open your TV settings menu. You might have to dig around a bit here to find the menu you want, but it's normally somewhere under the networking section. To help you out, here's where you can find the DNS settings menu on the sets of some popular manufacturers. For Sony, go to Network, Network Setup, choose Wired or Wireless Setup depending on your connection type, Custom, enter your DNS. For Samsung, go to Network, Network Status, IP Settings, change DNS settings to enter manually. And for LG, go to Network, select the connection type you're using, either wired or wireless, advanced Wi-Fi settings, edit, uncheck the option set automatically, and enter your custom DNS. Once you've input the specified DNS address or addresses, you're done. If you want to undo your smart DNS to go back to accessing your regular content, just return to the relevant menu and delete what you've entered. I should add that in our experience testing smart DNS, we found that very few actually work with unblocking streaming services reliably. A couple that I mentioned earlier, ExpressVPN's Media Streamer and Windscribe's Control-D are by far the best. On top of that, it's not like a VPN where connecting to the right server might unblock multiple services from within that country. Smart DNS servers are usually configured to only work with one specific service. And it's also fairly rare to be offered one that's for a non-US streaming library. So if you live in the United States, then that's probably not going to do much for you. Now that you know the options available and you can go out and make your choice, it's probably worth asking yourself one question before you do so. Why is it that you want to use a VPN with your smart TV? Staunch privacy advocates that we are, if you've ever watched any of our other videos or read any of the material on our website, you'll know that I and the rest of the team strongly recommend using a VPN on your computer and smartphone at all times. You have a right to anonymity and preserving the secrecy of your personal data. In fact, I think that you should really leave your VPN running 24-7 where possible. But when it comes to your smart TV, it's perhaps a little different. It's not like you're sending emails or doing online banking on your television. What little data that's transmitted to and from it isn't all that precious. If you're the sort of person who wants absolutely everything locked down and as secure as possible, then great do what you need to do to get a VPN running on your TV. That makes sense. But if all you want to do is change what you can watch, I'd suggest that you may not need to go out and buy a brand new Android TV or splash out on a high-end router. Using the other methods that we've just detailed, including Smart DNS, is probably the way to go. Don't overcomplicate things for yourself. I hope that this video has answered some of the questions you might have around VPNs and Smart TVs, and that you're able to go out and try some of the methods we covered off for yourself. As ever, if anything's confusing you or going wrong, I'd love to help you out in the comment section below, and be sure to like and subscribe to be the first to see when we release a new video. Stay safe, and I'll see you later.